right. How many of you know that he is? King of kings. The Lord of lords. He is the God of healing. He is the God of peace. He is our everything. Good morning, Emmaus. How are you guys this morning? All right. My name is Yvette O'Donnell, and I am here to welcome you to the Emmaus community on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Elise D. Barrymore and her entire leadership team. We welcome you this morning. We are so glad that you pressed your way to come here for this communion Sunday. We are so happy to have you here. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for rising us up this morning, Lord, and for planting our feet in this place, oh, Father God, so that we can hear a word from you, Father God, so that we can just experience your presence in this place, oh, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just being all that you are, Father God, for we know, Lord, that you are the beginning and the end. We know, Father God, that you sit high and you look low, Father God. Lord, we thank you for all that you do, oh, God. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to dwell with us, to be with us, O oh Lord. And as your woman servant comes forth with the word that you have prepared for her, Father God, may it sink deep within our hearts, Lord, within our minds, so that when we leave here, Father God, we will have a new pep in our step, Father God. We will have a new purpose, O oh God. We will have a new and increased faith, O oh God. Lord, we thank you ahead of time for all that you are going to do in this place. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Es uno, dos, uno, dos, probando, uno, dos, uno. Amen. <laughs> Buenos días, hermanos. So I'm coming this morning with a special prayers of the people emphasis, right? So uh, when one of our own experiences, loss and tragedy in a time of season and crisis, that is when we all come together in particular, amen, to be of support to each other um, and to be a voice for those who need their voice amplified, amen. It's a perfect illustration. I had the microphone, but the volume wasn't on. And many times there are voices among us that need to be heard, but they need to have the notches kicked up a little bit, amen. So in that spirit, I want to go ahead and call up Sister Alma Hill. Uh, we have a special prayers of people of covering for her. Uh, the night of February 4th, that was a Monday, uh, Sister Alma Hill's sister, Tamara Clayton, uh, who was a worker for the USPS, please, uh, she was on her way to work that night, and she was shot on I-57, shot and killed. Um, and again, it was a senseless act of violence. There's absolutely no rhyme, no reason whatsoever. Um, but uh, we uh, were able to funeralize her sister here and accompany her uh, during this time. But on this Wednesday, we wanted to make the community aware that this Wednesday, Sister Alma will be going to Springfield uh, to have the HB331 Expressway Safety Camera Act. They want to rename it the Tamara Clayton Act. Amen. <laughs> Because these senseless acts of violence on the highways and byways of our city and south suburbs must stop, amen? People must be able to get from point A to point B safely there and back and not have a family member wonder when they go out to work if they're going to come back or not. Yours truly, among others, takes I-57 often, amen? So we need to be in prayer, but to our prayer, we need to add action, amen? So what we're going to do right now is just as a people, those of you who are able to stand, I'm going to invite you to stand, but let's go ahead and say a special prayer. I'm going to invite Pastor Lisa to come up and then the elders as well. If we could simply surround Sister Alma and pray for her in this moment and simply declare that the grace and favor of God go with her, amen? That even as the prophet uh, said, Elisha, uh, that the eyes of those around her may be opened. That those who are with her outnumber those who are against her. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So right now, let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you right now, Lord. And we lift up Sister Alma before you right now, Lord God. 
God, we lift her up. God, we lift up her family, Lord God. We lift up each and every single person, God, whose lives were shaken, God, by this tragedy. But Lord God, we declare that we will not allow death and despair, Lord God, to overtake us utterly, Lord God. God, the psalmist says that, yea, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I know the Lord is with me. And God, we know that there is a shadow only because there is a light ahead, Lord God. So we declare, Lord God, that uh, over the life of Sister Alma and her family comes your favor supernatural right now, Lord God. That when she goes to Springfield, Lord God, and this legislation is debated, Lord God, that you will surround her, Lord God, with the divine favor of heaven moving on her behalf, God. That even as the word says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and moves to and fro like a river. So we declare, Lord God, that the hearts of those people in power, Lord God, will be turned, Lord God, towards, Lord God, those, Lord God, who are in need, God. Because your word says, God, that you are on behalf of the widow, the orphan, and the oppressed, Lord God, and those, God, who need you, Lord God. So we simply lift her up right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, and we use this point, God, as a moment of intercession for our city. Let's just continue to pray right now out loud, God. We pray, Lord God, for the city of Chicago. We pray, Lord God, for the south suburbs, God. We pray for I-94, for I-57, Lord God. We pray for Danville 394, God. We pray, Lord God, for all the highways and byways, God. We pray, Lord God, from 55th and Ashland, Lord God, all the way to... 207th in Ashland and Division, Lord God. We pray, God, that there will be a revival, God, of peace, Lord. God, that swords and spears will be beaten into plowshares in the name of Jesus, Lord God. That no weapon formed against your people, literal, Lord God, or abstract, would prosper in the name of Jesus. We declare peace, Lord God, in our highways, God. That this wave of violence would be overtaken, God, by the wave of your kingdom of light and peace, God. Stir us up as prophetic people in this day, God, that we would receive prophetic discomfort, God, for the suffering in our city, and that we would be a voice of truth speaking to those in power, Lord God, that the lives of people created in the image of God is worth more than anything else. We declare all these things, and we declare even your peace in the midst of this season, God. The peace that surpasseth all understanding would govern her mind and the lives of her family in Christ Jesus. We pray it all. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Emmaus. Thank you, family, that we're able to come together in these moments. Amen. Amen. And if you would like to reach out to Sister Alma, um, even after the gathering, I know she could use maybe one or two people who'd be willing to tag along with her on Wednesday. Um, she needs to be in Springfield by 10 a.m., I believe, in the morning. So it's an early trek. But if you are available, please let her know, amen, uh, that she can have some folks accompany her. Amen. Amen.
everybody. Oh, oh. Everybody sing. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. V I C T O R Y. V I C T O R Y. Good God Almighty, I got it. Here we go, put those hands together. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. The devil tried to trick me all, but I slipped away. No longer bound in sin, I have Christ within. I just can't keep it to myself. I gotta run and tell somebody else that I've got it. C T O R Y. The B I C T O R Y. Let me see, I got it. That's right. The B I C T O R Y. The B I C T O R Y. Here we go. Oh, say victory. Victory. Say victory. Victory. Say victory. I can't see it. Victory. Victory. Say I got it. Come on, could you encourage the children today? Can you encourage the children today? I don't hear you. That's right. From the top, everybody say, Oh, oh, I've got the victory. The B I C T O R Y. The B I C T O R Y. A little bit louder, I've got it. To the hood, come on, say victory. Victory. Say victory. Victory. Say victory. Victory. Say victory. Come on. Hey, I've got it. 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 Don't stop right here. This is our special part right here. Y'all ready? Hey, come on. Oh, stop on the devil's neck. Drop that music, Tony. Come on. Put your hands together. We need your help right there. Stop on the devil. Let me hear you. Stop on that devil's neck. Everybody say, stop on the devil's neck. Stop on the devil's neck. Stop on the devil's neck. A little bit louder, everybody stomp on the devil. Stomp on the devil's neck. Stomp on the devil's neck. Put those hands together for the children of be Woo! Come on, baby. 
attention to the screen so that we can get our weekly announcements. Good morning, Emmaus community. Today is Communion Sunday, April 7th, 2019. And here are your Emmaus community announcements. Let's start off by talking about Holy Week, running from April 16th through April 21st. There are ways we can do good, and there are ways we can worship. First, Let's talk about the ways we can do good. On Tuesday, April 16th, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., we will be making 3,000 food bags for the hungry. We need 50 volunteers to support this extraordinary effort at the Thornton Food Depository. Please see Reverend Jesus Marquez after the gathering to sign up. Next, on Wednesday, April 17th, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., we will serve and chaperone a school dance for special needs students. This is in association with the Speed Independence Elementary School in Chicago Heights. There are limited spots available. On Monday, Thursday, April 18th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., we will make greeting cards for the sick here at the building. There are unlimited spots available for this service opportunity. Finally, again on Monday, Thursday, we will serve and enjoy an agape meal with our neighbors at the Jones Memorial Community Center in Chicago Heights. Please sign up for these important opportunities to be the church during Holy Week. Next, let's talk about the ways we will worship. On Sunday, April 14th, we celebrate Palm Sunday during our 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. epic gatherings. On Monday, Thursday, April 18th, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we will have reflections on the life of Jesus Christ. And yes, He is alive. We will celebrate the risen Christ on Easter Sunday, April 21st, here at 925 MacArthur Drive. Please note, there will be three Easter epic gatherings. 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12.30 p.m. All of these gatherings will be led by our own Reverend Dr. Elise V. Barrymore. Hallelujah. What a week. By the way, our worship experience on Easter Sunday will include several guest artists. Please enjoy the following Emmaus Community video detailing our special guest performers. Attention men of Emmaus, in support of the Easter gathering, 
We are in need of several men to help facilitate the parking over these three gatherings. Please come out for an important meeting here at the building on Tuesday, April 9th at 6.30 p.m. to receive more detailed information. There is a sign-up table in the Fusion Cafe to support this event as well. Let's not forget that our brick wall continues to expand and we are awed by your commitment and generosity. As we grow ever closer to our collective goal, we remind you that we are still accepting your donations to the building fund. Remember, our next is now. The Linton Season Prayer Line continues Monday through Saturday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. It runs through Saturday, April 20th. Join us as we pray for continued blessings, favor, and miracles. We all know about the change in the telephone number. The new number is now 712-770-5505. The PIN number of 646-886 remains the same. See you on the prayer line. As for exploration, we continue to consider God at the crossroads. Last Thursday, we were blessed with the testimony of Joshua Tribe members Cheryl Jones Harper and Monica Harris. That was an amazing experience. Next Thursday, our own minister Isaac Hayes will lead exploration. Please be sure to be there. Fellowship is at 6.30 p.m. and exploration at 7 p.m. sharp. See you there. Attention parents of Clubhouse Ignite and PG-13 members, please remember the Watson Go to Birmingham play is now scheduled for Sunday, May 19th. The play starts at 11 a.m. and they will travel to the play during the 10 a.m. gathering. Everyone is asked to RSVP Minister Isaac Hayes, even if you completed the previous RSVP, so we can have an accurate count and transportation can be reserved. It's Easter basket time and we need your help. We are attempting to prepare 150 baskets for Easter Sunday, and we need lots of donations of candy. Can you bring rags of individually wrapped candy uh, to the building before April 14th? We really need your assistance, and your help is greatly appreciated. Lastly, registration for Kids Summer Camp is now open. The camp, located in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, runs from June 30th to July 3rd. There'll be horseback riding, swimming, climbing, crafts, just to name a few of the activities. The cost of the camp is $150 per camper. A $50 non-refundable deposit is due today. Please note that there is also a 25% discount if you pay in full by the end of the day. Please contact Minister Isaac Hayes at ihayes at the Community.org with any questions. Before we go any further, we want to acknowledge our outstanding Super Sunday service experience at Feed My Starving Children in Aurora, Illinois. Again, the Emmaus community was able to go out and be the church. Collectively, we packed over 75 boxes, resulting in over 16,000 meals. On top of that, because of your generous and consistent giving, we are able to present a check to their ministry. Well done, Emmaus. And speaking of generosity, here at the Emmaus community, we are striving to be generous in our giving. It is just a part of our biblical act of worship. We begin by simply obeying God with our tithes, believing for increase as we grow in faith to give beyond our 10%. So, you can either drop your offering at the Emmaus Community Giving Baskets. They are conveniently located in the back of the Sanctuary, Fusion Cafe, and Family Viewing Areas. Or you can mail your offerings to the Emmaus Community, 925 MacArthur Drive, Chicago Heights, Illinois, 60411. Or you can use our convenient Givelify application on your mobile phone. Thank you, Emmaus Community. This has been your Emmaus Community announcements for Sunday April 7th, 2019. Amen. Let's try to say amen. amen. 
It is my responsibility and my privilege again to add my thanks to all who went out on last Sunday. It was a superb time. But my um, a job today is to update you on Easter. Amen to Jesus. I know you all heard it and some were shocked. Um, but let me remind you, if you haven't heard it before, we are having three gatherings on Easter Sunday. Well, one for the Creator, one for the Savior, one for the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, so... Um, But we are doing that because we want to make sure it's opportunity for us to be who we said we were going to be. And that's a community of faith that makes space for people who are distant from God, who are disconnected from God, who are unsure about God. And Easter is a time when people who are seeking after God kind of have this idea, maybe I'll go to church today and see if God is real, see if God is relevant, see if this thing really works. And so we know um, that in the past we have rented the Tinley Park Convention Center, but we decided we weren't going to do that this year because all monies are being redirected to the church we're trying to buy. Amen. So we're not going to give money away when we're trying to save money and raise money. So we said, how do we dig deep here in the house to have the same experience, but at this place? Amen. And so we decided the only way to do that is to make room for people to get in. If you don't have enough worship gatherings, there's no place for them to sit. Amen. And so what we're going to do, we're going to have three gatherings on Easter, each with a different emphasis. And so you'll see some little flyers that look like this. You can take those at the 7.30. Notice we're going to go a little bit earlier. At the 7.30 gathering on Easter Sunday, we're calling that our tradition at its best worship gathering. That's what I'm calling my Easter lily worship. Amen. So if you have people who are more traditional and like a more muted kind of worship, um, this is the one for them. We're going to have the Easter lilies. We're going to sing Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Y'all know how it goes, right? Amen. And so that's how it works. It's traditional. Easter worship. So if that's your flavor, come on, come on, come and get your friends up early to come at 730. At our 10 o'clock gathering, we changed the flavor yet again. The 10 o'clock is more of our Emmaus come alive worship. And so it'll feel a little bit like this. And our children will make their Easter presentation during that worship gathering. And so that's when we do a little bit more video technology, contemporary thing. And we're calling that just live. He's alive. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of the Christ. Now, by the time we get to the third worship, amen, hallelujah. By the th- third one, I say, never had three of myself, hallelujah. At 12.30, if the first one, my Easter lily, the second one is my come alive, the third one, let's get lit. Amen. By 12.30, I just feel like we done got up early to seek him. We ought to celebrate by 12.30. So we're having a white party at 1230 for worship. So you know your friends, amen, who are seeking after God, and they may have went out the night before. They don't have to get up and seek him early on Easter. They can slide in right about 1215 and consider themselves attended for worship, right? Or if you have friends that get up and they say, oh, Lord, I done missed church. It started at 11. You say, no, baby, it started at 1230. You still good. Get dressed and come on. And so we are so excited for our 12th third, there will still be a sermon, amen, but it's a whole different flow, and we're so excited that our friends, Markel Joy and Psalmist Joyce Hurley, are going to lead us in a white party experience, right, on that day, so there's going to be some contemporary music that's going to be flipped and reinterpreted, amen, and we just going to have a good time in the Lord by 1230. Now, here's the ask, friends. At the white party, we do invite you to wear white. You don't have to, but we encourage you to. So if you're going to be an all-day worship like many of us, it's okay to do a wardrobe change. There's going to be enough time between the 10 o'clock and the 1230 for any wardrobe changes. I'm just saying. Now, I'm not trying to be no example. I'm just saying. If indeed that is you and you feel a need that your white party stuff can't be at the 730 gathering, amen, it's all right. But the real answer is this. The real ask is this. One, we need you to cover us in prayer because it's marathon time. We'll be in worship all of Holy Week and all day on Easter Sunday. The second ask is if you're a member of the Emmaus community, we're asking you to make space and make room for people to come. One, by taking some of these flyers, we have one for each. So don't give your Easter lily one to your party friends necessarily. One, you might want to get them the white party. Pick which one you want to invite them to and give them the flyer that goes with it. Um, we want to, so we want you to witness because we historically have tripled attendance on Easter and we want to do the same thing in this space. Amen. So we need each person to be responsible for three visitors on that day. Each person. That's how you get to your number, right? So, but we also need you as a member to do two other things besides invite people. On Easter Sunday, I'm going to need you to pick one to worship at 
and I need you to pick one to serve at. That's what I need you to do. Now, I want you to get your worship in, so I don't want you to necessarily to be here all three. But I need you to worship and sit down on one. But on the second one, I need you to stand up and work. And I don't mean being here trying to get none of the sermon. I need you to be in the parking lot. I need you to be serving food. I need you to be welcoming people, cleaning up. Whatever it is we need done, we need all hands on deck. Because the majority of people who come to worship on Easter are visitors. And so they don't know a lot about church. And so we don't need them to be fumbling around on Easter. It's already stressful enough trying to get here. Amen? So I need you to worship one and what work one so get that in your mind and next week we're going to invite you to sort of commit to where you're going to work does that make sense so invite three people worship one and work one that's what we're doing for easter can the church say amen amen, amen. so get ready for easter hallelujah thank you. all right man so i have a couple of corrections from our announcements First of all, I'd like to correct Minister Isaac Hayes. His email address is ihayes at the Emmauscommunity.org. Okay? The other correction is regarding children's camp this year. It stated that it was a 25% discount, but it's $25 discount. Okay? All right. So if all hearts and minds are clear, we are going to pray over our offering. Oh, I'm sorry back it up. First of all, I'd like to welcome our visitors. Do we have any visitors today? Can you just wave your hands? Hey, we got a couple of visitors. All right. Welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you here. We welcome you here. We hope that you will come back a couple of times because here at Emmaus, as you just heard, we do things a little bit differently here, but we do things according to God's word and according to his will. So what you are receiving is either a card and you can turn that card in at the end of your gathering and you can get it a CD or a DVD of one of our previous gatherings. And then also at the end, if you would like to just shake the hand of our pastor, we would love for you to meet her. So we just thank you for coming today, and we welcome all of our cyber saints who are out there visiting with us. So now we will say a prayer over our offering. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being our provider. We thank you, Lord, for giving us everything that we not only need, but a lot of things that we want, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the wall that has been built, Lord. Not a wall to keep people away, Father God, but a wall, Lord, that will help to build and to help us to get into a new place, Lord, Father God, in order to receive all of your new people, oh God. So we thank you, Lord, for everything that has yet to be given. We thank you, Lord, for the obedience of your people, for their tithes, for their offerings, for their gifts, oh God. Lord, we ask that you will bless them, oh Father God. You will bless them, oh Lord, so that we can go out and be the hands and feet of you. We pray, Father God, that you will multiply, Father God, and that you will do exceedingly and abundantly in the way of our offerings and tithes and gifts, O oh Lord. As we move into our now, Father God, we pray, O oh Lord, that everything that we do, everything that we say will be pleasing in thy sight. And Father God, we ask that you will bless these offerings in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. season to reap what I have so come on say with me this is my season for grace for favor this 
She's my season. She's my season. To reap what I am. To reap what I am. Oh, you should be able to sing it to yourself now. This is my season for grace, for grace, for favor, favor. She's my season. She's my season. To reap what I have sown. Haven't been perfect, but I sure been faithful. God's got a purpose, and I know He is able. I've got a seed in the ground that He's blessing. No more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground. Now I know him, I can show him this is my seed. Come on, sing it, child. For grace, for favor, this is my season. This is my season. To reap what I have sown. To reap what I have sown. Say it again. This is my season. For grace, for favor, for favor. This is my season. This is my season. To reap what I have sown. God's word says, Everything is working together for my good. Everything is working together for my good. Let me hear you say, Everything is working together, together for my good. For my good. Say it one more time. Everything is working together, together for my good. For my good. Say it again. Everything is working. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. For my good. It's for my good. It's for my good. For grace, for favor. I'm talking to myself. Talk to myself. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Everybody say, This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season. What I have so reap what I have so listen, listen. I say this to myself and I've said this before. You know, we keep saying spring has arrived, but it's cold as ever, and I wore linen and I know it's not time to wear linen, but I wore linen because I know that the season has changed. Not based upon what I see, but based upon what I know, based upon the calendar that has been laid before me, we're now in spring, right? So then I can have an expectation of warm weather. I can prepare for warm weather. I can wear linen and put my toes out and wear a scarf around my neck with a light jacket. I don't care how cold it is, the season has changed. So I say that to say for some of you, your season has already changed. You just haven't changed your clothes yet. You need to go home and you need to get rid of some of the things that, that carry heaviness. You need to go home and get rid of some of the things that remind you of what you went through, what you've been through, and what you've already overcome. And you need to start taking out the spring dressing. Spring dressing looks like praise. Spring dressing looks like faith. Spring dressings look like hope. Spring dressing looks like destiny. Spring dressing looks like peace. So y'all go home and y'all get your wardrobes in order. Can anybody attest to that? Come on, y'all. This 
listen. There's one more line that says this. See, says God is leaning. Say, in my direction. You gotta say it with a lot of attitude. Yes, He's leaning. Oh, in my direction. Come on, everybody, say it. Say it with a lot of attitude. Come on, He's leaning. God, I believe I see you whispering He's leaning in my direction In my direction hey, Say, it's good It's good It's good It's good It's, good. it's, good. it's, good. it's, it's working for my good. good It's good It's good It's for your good It's good It's good, it's good. Yeah. This is my season for grace, for favor. Come on. This is my season to reap, to reap what I have. So now, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. We worship you, we praise you, and we honor you. We do declare this is our season, God. And we recognize, God, that you are close and you are leaning in our direction, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that it won't be long that we'll see the manifestation of your glory, your praise, your favor, Lord God. We do declare, Lord God, that you are leaning in our direction. And so we see your handiwork, Lord God, and we testify that you are working everything out for our good. Amen. Can we just stay right there for just a minute and declare that? God is leaning in my direction. I see you, Lord. God is leaning in my direction. Come on, lean to the left. Lean to the left. Lean to the left. God is leaning. Come on, lean into the presence of the Lord. In my direction. One more time, say, come on. God is leaning. In my direction. Huh? This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season. To reap what I have sown. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. The Bible says he's working everything out for the good. And so we trust and believe and we declare that this is our season. And as we're moving from next to now, that's a season of breakthrough. It's a season of signs and wonders and miracles and favor. And we praise God that God is true to God's word, that God is leaning toward us, that we have the attention of the Holy Ghost. And we thank God for the power of the Spirit, that we have not been overlooked. We have not been forgotten about. We have not been forsaken. But God is leaning the full way in the office of the Holy One of Israel is moving in our direction and so I'm so grateful to the power and the presence of the Spirit of God in this place and for all the worship that has gone forth and for all the intercessions that have gone up and for the word that will come forth with simplicity, clarity, and power. I praise God for the opportunity to add into this stream of the Spirit's presence. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all that you're doing and for your Spirit that is in this place. And so I pray simply, Lord God, that these words prepared, oh God, these words that are offered up to you, oh God, that you would blow afresh on them, oh God, that they would quickly minister grace to the hearers, oh God, that we won't have to tarry long, but we will hear your voice and respond, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray that it's all about you, Lord God, and not about me. I pray, Lord God, that you don't bless because of. I pray, Lord God, that you would bless in spite of, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and declare, amen. 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 Harvest. We said, and we've been talking about it for over three months now. The scripture says in Galatians chapter 6, right around verse number 9, so let us not grow weary 
in doing good or doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. King James Version, if you faint not. And so I wanted to read that scripture today, and I wanted to return to that promise of God that we ought not to grow weary in well-doing. I need you all to know that that uh, one verse is a part of a, a larger text of scripture. So I want to read the whole context so you understand what God is saying in that text um, through the Second Testament. It says this, and it's one that is familiar. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. Here's our key verse. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever you have opportunity, let's work for the good of all. Don't grow weary in doing what's right. So for the last three months, we've been waiting and expecting and praying and fasting and doing good. And it makes sense that we ought to be in a season of expectation, even as we have concluded and are still participating in a season of intercession. Because every Sunday of 2018, we pray to stay connected to the vine so that we might bear fruit and not just bear fruit, but bear much fruit and bear more fruit. So we should expect expect increase. We should anticipate fruit. It is a season of grace and favor and breakthrough, right? It makes sense for us to be in expectation. It also makes sense because the scripture says in verse number seven that God will not be mocked. God will not be made a liar. God will not be made fun of. The Bible says God will not be mocked. Whatever you reap, you also will sow. So we should expect some harvest. We should expect some reaping. Because we got some seeds in the ground. We planted some seeds of faith. Now, you may not be familiar with verse number seven. Maybe you heard it the more popular colloquial way. What goes around comes around type of thing. What you put out there is what you should expect back. All of that comes from this idea you reap what you sow. And so I want to celebrate the fact that we have been sowing into God's work, into God's will. We have a total of over $400,000 that is leaning toward our goal of $600,000 for the new building. We have sown in generosity with money. We have sown in prayer. Folks are on the prayer lab every day at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. giving witnesses signs and wonders. We have sown sown our time. We have sown our talent of doing good in the neighborhood. We have given resources and money. We volunteered. We packed meals. We've given basketballs. We've sung carols. We've done good in our neighborhood. And we plan to not come around during Holy Week and just praise God up in here. But we're going to go out there and meet the needs of our community. Because the scripture says every time you get an opportunity, you ought to do some good for all. So, so it's right for us that God is moving our direction because we've already seen testimonies of safety and we've seen testimonies of healing and provision and longevity and life. We've heard teachings about callings and commitments. We have heard witness of increase. And so we recognize it's true that what you reap, you shall sow. Or you should experience harvest, reaping, increase, because that's what the Bible says. But this morning, I want to come to say, I believe the Bible from cover to cover, but I'm holding two parallel truths in tension today. The scripture says, and I believe that we should reap what we sow. What you put out there, what you should get back, right? But sometimes I have discovered, particularly the last couple of weeks, that sometimes you can get some stuff you didn't plant. I'm just, they both true. Am I, am I correct? That sometimes life will happen to you and you will get some stuff that you didn't plan. That you planted goodness and and, and rebuke come back to you. You planted kindness and wickedness come back to you. You planted love and hate come back to you. And you want to say to some people, y'all don't know the rules of the cosmos. I put out good. I'm expecting some good to come back to me. 
so this week I got two things in tension in my soul. Some things happened this week and I had to say to God, now look like to me, Jesus, I'm going to need a little more harvest right now because this don't look like harvest up here. I see harvest over here a little bit. I see a little bit of green over there, but over here it still look like a harvest waiting to come through. I'm getting some stuff I ain't planned. And I've heard it in the, in the, in the membership. Some sincere saints have gotten some serious reports from doctors. They've only put out good, but they keep getting negative reports back. It's not what you sold. Some of our family members have become ill or incapacitated, and what they put out there is not what they got back. They're surprised by the intensity of the pain. Some of our bodies are not aligning with our confessions of healing and our good health practices. We put now, we drinking the green juice, amen, and still seem to be sick, amen. It's not just in this community, it's in our nation. I mean, just read the news. Grammy-nominated L.A. rapper and community hero Nipsey Hussle's gunned down in front of his own self-store, right? Somebody walk up, shake his hand as if they were going to bring greetings and come back around in between lunch and shoots him dead. And his beloved Lauren London is trying to figure out how to live her life without him. He planted hope in a community and he got hateful harm. In 2018, he had this out called the Victory Lap, and his Victory Lap had ended in sudden death in 2019. Or, or maybe you feel in some kind of way this Sunday morning, uh, because if you're from Detroit, amen, uh, you felt some kind of goodness and gladness when a Michigan State beat out Duke, amen. You felt joy bells ringing in your soul. I mean, you felt like God was going to come through. God was going to redeem the time when they beat Michigan State. I know a little thing about a little something. But then they got beat by Texas Tech. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I just put out good hope out there. I don't know how that happened. Happen, right, but I put out good vibes for the green and white, and what came back was Texas Tech. I don't know how that happened, but maybe you was watching that other game, right? And a questionable call and questionable insight with Virginia and Auburn. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. We're trying to say now what the what the now where you come up with that, right? Um, even these teams are trying to figure out after months of preparation, it did not produce the win. It resulted in loss and suspicion around it. Sometimes you get some stuff you didn't put out there. Some of us are feeling some kind of way today because we campaigned for our candidate, but our candidate didn't win. They didn't make the school board or the trustee board or the library board or even the mayor in the city of Chicago. I don't know who voted for whom, but somebody had to lose. So somebody put something out there and it got something different back. Some folks were walking home from school in downtown Flossmoor just the other day and was robbed at gunpoint. Some folks were shopping in the dollar store on Halsted just last night while somebody was robbing the dollar store at gunpoint. They went in for a discount. Luckily, no one was harmed or hurt, but they went in to get a discount. They were just trying to mind their business and walk home from school and somebody with a gun approached them to take from them. They put out goodness, but negativity and badness came back. And I just need to say this week, uh, we have been prophesying and praying over and believing God for a new building, right? And it's moving slower than I had hoped for and imagined. And I felt like, Jesus, we've been fasting and praying we had some dates set out there, Lord, and I still believe, God, that you're working every single thing out for the good. I, I'm not moving from that. But on the other hand, it looked like we put out haste. We raised money quick, Lord. We sent, our, we sent our offer in quick, Lord. We turned things around quickly. We had two plans um, that were parallel plans. I still had a plan for the new building for Easter. Let the church say amen. Just in case I ordered the sign, you know, in hopes that things was going to speed up. But things are taking just a teeny bit longer than I imagined. God is working everything out for the good. And it's taking longer than I thought. Beloved, I came this morning to just say out loud what some of y'all are thinking. It is possible to plant good seed in the ground and not fully realize the fruit of the growth in the moment that you expect. 
The older saints would say, God does not come when you want him. Though they always say God comes on time. So today, I want to talk about what happens when you put your seed in the ground and you don't yet have good fruit. So, so, so first I had to ask myself, I said, well, what stunts the growth? What slows the process? Because the word of God is true that if you plant seed in the ground, it's going to bear fruit. So we know that's not going to fail, right? So what's happening in the meantime? And so I came up with a few things I'd like to suggest. First, I want to say sometimes the fruit does not come up. You don't see the manifestation of your prayer. You don't see the fullness of, of your growth and your breakthrough. It's because of the weeds that have got in there with your plants. Are you all with me? It's not because you did anything wrong. It's not because you didn't hear from the Lord. It's not because you don't have enough faith. It's just weeds in the ground. The Bible tells the story of planting, that a farmer goes out to plant good seeds. Y'all know this story? But it says in the late night hour that the enemy comes in, right? And the enemy comes in and plants some weeds while you wasn't looking. And then when the season of harvest has come, right, your little seed is trying to get up and poke through so you can get your testimony. And the weeds is trying to strangle your testimony. How many folks? are neighbors with some weeds. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Have work with some people that are trying to choke out. Amen. Your joy and your hope and your commitment. And so it's not because you're not doing the right thing. It is because you're doing the right thing. The weeds are there to test the strength of the fruit. And they're going to poke at you and they're going to try to strangle you and try to take your breath away because they don't want the fruit to come to pass. Anybody know I love my grandfather. He was a good missionary Baptist guy. And he, missionary Baptist does that mean he don't believe in long and he didn't believe in loud? Amen. He said, God is not deep. Amen. He said, when he said, God ain't deep, you ain't got to talk that loud. You ain't got to holler and you ain't got to move out your seat. God can hear you and God know where you at. Amen. Which is so strange because he married my grandma who was a straight tongue talking, running around the house, oil on the mantle, Pentecostal. I don't know how they was married that good long time. Amen. And so I had both trains running in my head and my grandfather father say he said he say it's just some people just like that he say they act crazy <laughs> he say but even the sinners know what God's up to that's what my granddaddy said he say the sinners know the people who are far from God know that you're in the midst of a breakthrough on the precipice of your breakthrough and so they would do everything they can to try to squeeze out your witness why do they do that they just weeds Growing up, that's what they do. Weeds grow up to suck out the nutrients of the fruit or the plant. But there is a season when the Holy Spirit comes with a weed whacker. Are y'all with me? Hello, somebody. Because in that story in the Bible, he said, don't worry about the weeds that's trying to strangle out. It may slow down the process, but they can't utterly overtake you. The Bible says, let the, let the fruit and the plant grow up alongside the weed. Don't you try to take nobody out. Because at the appropriate time, God will send God's own angels and ministry and grace to come and pluck up the weeds to move things back so that your fruit can flourish. So maybe it is the case that some of the slow down because of the harvest because they're just weeds that evil. Some of this stuff is just evil y'all. I can't make sense of some of the crazy that is happening in the earth. I am not convinced it all has divine purpose. This is the will of God. It is not the will of God for people to be held up at stores. It is not the will of God for people to be driving on expressway and can't make it home. Do not try to put God's name on evil. That's just straight evil in the land. So sometimes we don't see the harvest because of, because of the weeds. So that's kind of stuff you can't explain. You got to live with it and try to live the best you can in the midst of it. But a second reason that the growth doesn't happen is because there are strong winds. And so sometimes the winds of change are coming so strongly that they're blowing down the fruit or, or the manifestation that God has for you. Now, so when you have a strong wind, listen, you need to have strong storm shelter. Now, I'm not a gardener. Uh, my plants come from the Home Depot. Amen. They hanging on a hook. I pay $9.99 and I go hang them on my deck. Amen. That's how it works. That's all the gardening I do. But I know that some of my other neighbors who do much better than I, they have these bushes, particularly these rose bushes they have. And they have what I call a bucket over it. Now, I'm sure it has a sophisticated name, but they put this little plastic bucket on top of the plant and they put a brick on it. Now, to me, it looked a little bit crazy, but that's what they do every year. So clearly it must do, they do something. 
right? And so the little plant under the cold weather or in the wind is protected by the plastic bucket with a brick because they know the winds are going to come and they don't want the wind to blow their little plant over. Amen. Amen. Somebody, y'all still with me? So sometimes things slow down because there's a wind blowing and sometimes our plants don't have a shelter of protection around them, right? We just putting the plant up a little bit, but we haven't built things around to block the winds that are trying to literally blow it over. Amen. And so sometimes you have to make sure you have a storm shelter, even if nobody can see it but you. So if you're in between your manifestation, I want to know, are your roots deep enough? And are you surrounded enough so that you can protect your plant, your seed from the winds that will come to kill, steal, and destroy? Pastor, what I'm talking about, I'm so glad you asked. Well, this week I had an opportunity to go with Joshua Tribe on Friday night. I let the church say amen. We have had church on Thursday night. We went to Taze on Friday night. We had leadership meeting on yesterday and worship four days in a row. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hanging out with the saints. God bless us all. Amen. And so we had a chance to go to a Taze service at this church in Oak Park, right? It's a Catholic church. And it's, I mean, it's very Catholic. What I mean, they had these beautiful, beautiful, like Sistine Chapel paintings on the walls. And they had candles and they had the holy water. They had the whole nine. It was just a holy space. Well, on the first Friday, instead of going to the club or before the club, and they're not knocking that, you go to the Taze prayer worship. So we walk in there 14 deep, right? We're going to the prayer service, right? Trying to figure out what they do. And they chanting here and they singing in Latin here and they holding them candles. We got right in. We didn't know all the time what they were saying, amen. But we recognized Jesus. So every time they said Jesus, we were like, hallelujah. And then, we, then we realized you're not supposed to talk. They're like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just... That's what I was doing, trying to hold myself. I was getting excited. And so for an hour, we just prayed these simple prayers, and we sang these chant songs, and they read scripture in three languages. They learned it in English, in French, in Spanish, and then they invited you to go up, and it was very special. They lit these candles, Jesus, the light of the world, and they said you can walk up and put your candle at the foot of the cross, recognizing that light is going to push back the darkness, and if you feel led, you can come and touch the cross if you want to, and if you feel led, you can kneel down, you can believe and leave all your burdens, and so here we are in a neighborhood we do not know, at a church we've never been to but the people said your shelter is in Jesus the Christ and we believe in Jesus and if you believe that you ought to put a stake in the sand and say I'm covered by the blood of Jesus I'm covered by the power of the spirit let you they were singing in whatever language they were singing and the people started getting up I didn't know y'all there might have been a protocol maybe you're supposed to go row by row I didn't know my first time there but they kept saying the name of Jesus amen they kept saying Jesus and when you keep saying Jesus and there's a cross there and it's quiet see I just jumped out my seat, amen, and ran down the aisle behind the people. Yes, I did. I put my little candle there, and I knelt with the best of them because I said, Lord, I need you to be a shelter so when the winds come, my faith is not shaken. God, I'm trying to guard your little promise. You said we were going onward and upward. I'm not going to let anything blow me away. So you got to have stuff around you, and if your old stuff not working, try something new. If you loud, try quiet. If you quiet, try loud. <laughs> try something because you got to protect the seed. You, you, you can't let the worries of life, you can't let the weeds of life, you can't let the winds of life steal your seed. The next thing I recognize is sometime right before breakthrough, right? It is going to be the hardest for you. I was telling the leadership team on yesterday, you know, I got a seed of faith for our building and I'm believing God. I've been praying on it. I've been prepping on it. I just, I'm just believing God. I'm, I'm telling y'all crazy, crazy. If y'all see people, a person who look like your pastor walking down the street, uh, it is me. Amen. Cause I'm praying like they do in the Bible days. You need to walk wherever your foot take that the land is yours. I mean, that's me. That's me. If you see me, just say a prayer. Don't be nervous. It's me. It is me. And I'm in my right mind, right? Because I recognize that when you, at the beginning, uh, about to get to your breakthrough, right? Um, that it, the, the fire get hotter. I told them the story yesterday. I reminded them. I said, y'all remember the story of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, right? When they would not bow down, when they would not cave in, when they would not let go of the dream of God in their heart, right? The scripture says they were going to be thrown into the furnace, but not just in the furnace, as if fire is not hot all by itself. The scriptures say they heated it up. Like, how you do that to make it hotter than it normally was, right? And they said, well, if our God does not rescue us, our God is still able, right? So I just wanted to go to that little 
apart, the fire got hotter. Now, they already intended to kill the people. But right before you get through this thing, you're going to make it hotter? Right? That doesn't make no kind of sense, right? But as my grandfather say, even the sinners know that God is in the business. Amen? they like, if I'm going to take down this person to God, I got to raise the heat up another level. So maybe they'll let go of the dream. Maybe they'll let go of the seed. Maybe they will forsake what they heard. So this week, I'm just clear without details. The fire went up three more notches. Three more notches. I said, my God, are you kidding me? You really trying to take this out, aren't you? Trying to take me over, trying to discourage me. Okay, okay, okay. So I see what's happening. I see what's happening. You want to see if I'm still going to go in the fire. That's what you're saying. Oh, so, so the Lord said, just declare, let the three Hebrews say, our God is able. But if he don't, I ain't going to change my mind. I ain't going to change my mind. I'm not going to change my mind. Right? I'm a stick. Y'all know the end of that story is so great. They're thrown into the fiery furnace, and the scriptures say they're not consumed, but they have to get out, and they say there's another person in there that God rescues them from the fiery furnace, and then the vision of God is made manifest and keeps going. Right? I'm here to declare there are moments in your life where your faith is tested, when the fire gets hotter to see if you're going to bend down, if you're going to bow down, if you're going to retract. And so when I found out, yeah, we couldn't have the, the worship at the, at the new church, right? I'm just going to confess that did something to me. I had to pull myself back together. I wasn't utterly defeated, but I was some kind of sad. I was like, Jesus, I already planned how we were going to use the fellowship. Oh, Jesus, I already had decorations in mind. And this is me. I'm talking to the Lord just like this. Jesus, now we got to have three worship services, Lord God. Help us. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on, Lord. I'm, I'm just taking this is my truth. <laughs> you, you, got, you, got to, you got to rearrange because the vision don't change, right? The mission don't change. You still got to do the work. Okay, Lord, we're going to do it here. Okay. And, and so it got hot and some things happened in my personal life and with my family. So I'm juggling all these different things at the same time, trying to pray for this one, intercede for that one, rescue that one, make decisions for this one. I'm like, you got to be kidding, right, Jesus? But, but then the Lord took me to this text. He said, Psalm 126, I want you to hold on to this. And I want to offer this for those of us who are waiting for our seed to bloom. One of the reasons that the seeds take a while to, to kind of get up there is because, listen here, the, dry, the ground is too dry. If there's not sufficient water, even if you protected it from the wind, right, even if the weeds are, are pushed back, you still got to have enough water for it to grow. And so I said, Lord, okay, you got to help me with that. And it's in the book. It's in Psalm 126. It says this. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Verse 4, restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Is it? Verse 5, may those who sow in tears weep with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Now, we don't have time to go into deep Bible study. I know all my scholars are in here, but the quick version is, you all know that Psalm 126 is a part of the Psalms of Ascent. It's a small group of psalmings in the Bible, right? And they talk about these songs of movement and progression. Some historians think that these psalms were written, it depends, Psalm 126 probably was written during Ezra's time as a song when they were come out of Babylonian captivity. It was resurrected and reenacted as people were going into the temple for worship. So it's a psalm or song of movement. This psalm was in a couple parts, the first couple verses, it talks about those who have returned from captivity, whose seed had sprouted and they had fruit. The second path, part of the verse is a prayer for those who were still in captivity, that all would receive this restoration. It says that when God began to move on their behalf and restore them, it was like a dream. They could not believe their eyes. Even the sinners or their enemies were like, oh my God, God is moving. So they began to pray as God began to move. 
He says, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Do y'all see? We have sown our time. We have sown our talent. We have sown our money. But one of the things is there's a little water left to be on the plant, and it's called sowing in tears. How many people have sown some tears over their seed? Are you all with me? That there's an intensity to this thing that the tears of our face, the worries of our heart, the concerns of our soul, we ought to let the tears flow because they water the seed. Some of us are holding back anxiety and worry and stress and strain because we don't want to let go and let our true emotions be seen. But the scripture says the people who sow in tears, those who have been weeping and crying, they are the ones who are going to turn the tears into dancing, into shouts of joy. Could it be that the last ingredient for this seed to sprout are those who dare to cry? to sow some tears. And so I want to suggest today, maybe the missing ingredient is the tears that we have not cried, right, man? And maybe the missing ingredient is for those of us who need to cry out on behalf of those who are oppressed. So it's not just the tears of moaning. Our life is so bad. There's some of us who need to cry out and say, here and no more. Maybe it comes to fruition when some people put the rest of their heart back in it. Are y'all still with me? I got one more point and I'm going to get to communion. See, there is a sense for some of us, it is easier to give money. Especially when we got two or three dollars. We say, oh, I'm just going to write a little check. Praise the Lord. Hope the church do something. Ooh, thank the Lord. They didn't ask me to do nothing. Ooh, I didn't have my money, but I got stuff to do. Not that he made I'm saying figuratively. I'm saying figuratively. In the kingdom at large. We write a check. If we don't write a check... We ask our cousin and who got money to come on. We all going to come together. Because that's what we're going to do. And I love that. That's beautiful. We should do that. Got to do that, right? Uh, but so this first is the money part. Then the second thing is our time and talent. Then it gets a little tricky. Now, I done gave y'all some money for a brick. <laughs> you think I'm fitting to go to the food pantry and pack vegetables for people who should have had enough money to buy their own vegetables? Nobody says that, but far too many people think it. Like the reason you're in this situation because you did something wrong. And if you had to follow all the rules, you wouldn't be in this situation. People don't say that, but they believe that because if you're in a situation, if you've ever been on the side of need, people might give, but they give with attitude and they give with strings attached and they look down on people so low that you don't want to get whatever they're giving you because the people who give it are not giving it out of a good heart or a good soul and a good mind. It's punitive. You can have a green bean, but I don't want to see you in the green bean line the next time we come to pack the groceries. I'm saying church people. I'm not saying nobody that I know of. So it's one thing to give you money. The second ask is to give you time. Can you come and pack some groceries? Can, can you humble yourself enough to go to the speed school with a small group of folks? They want to keep it small because of their population. You can't have too many visitors and too many people that they're unfamiliar with in that context. But, but, but is it beneath you to humble yourself to go and clean after people who are struggling in this life? to get along, people who don't necessarily communicate the way you communicate or able to even control bodily functions in the way that you can. That's what it means to go next door to that school, not Kennedy one school over, the speed school, to help people. Can you do that? That, That's another ask. Some money, some some time. Can can you come and make some cars for people who are in ICU? We're, We're partnering with the hospital. These are not just random cars. These are people in hospital who need treatment and care, who may not get anything. Can you write a kind note to them on Thursday? That's what it is. But this is the last piece. Your money, your time, then you got to put your heart in it when it's really going to cost you. Are you willing to weep when other people are weeping? Not just sending some thoughts and prayers to folks. That's great. Send a thought and a prayer. I think Jesus did more stuff than sending thoughts and prayers. Uh, That's that's my understanding. But, But could you weep with the things that break the heart of God? When is the last time you cried on behalf of somebody else? I know we all going through stuff. I'm talking about for somebody else. That your heart was broken to the point where you had to go and reach out and see if they was okay and go sit with them. That's what that text says. Are you sowing in tears? Are you expanding the capacity of your heart to receive the next thing that God has for you? Are you sowing in tears? Are you crying out against the injustice? Maybe the injustice didn't come to you, but it came to somebody. Or are you waiting for a turn to get close enough to you? I think Homewood and Flossmoor is mighty close. 
Are you crying out for kids who are struggling in schools? The scripture says, those who sow in tears, the reaping for them is shouts of joy. And so the invitation today is to put your heart in it, to cry on behalf of, to cry out for. And then the last piece, this is risky, and then to cry for yourself. Because some of the reason that we get stuck and can't move to the next thing is because we have not properly mourned the last thing. And so we're carrying our heartbreak like a backpack. We're getting ready to move to the new church. Let me pick up all my heartache, my heartbreak, my issues, and my arts so I make sure there's space for them at the new church. And so I wonder today, if maybe the last invitation while we're waiting on God to work a miracle is that we weep over some of the things that didn't go right. That we weep over some of the things that we know went wrong. We get them off our chest. We speak them out. We unearth them. We bring them to life. Because maybe the delay is not just the work of the evil one. It's not just banks that take a long time. Maybe some of the delay is connected to us. That God so wants us to be new. That God's going to wait till we let go of the old. So that we don't take the old stuff to the new place. Because the children of Israel, they had to leave Babylon. And they had to pray not to take the old stuff with them. And so I got a sense there are a few lingering things. And I got my own box I'm about to unpack. So I don't mistakenly take it to the next place. So I want us to sing that last song. Our seed is still in the ground. It's going to bear fruit. It's going to come to pass. And we believe God is leaning in our direction. And so I'm going to invite us to lean back toward God. So I'm going to ask y'all to come back just for a little bit before we transition to communion. It's okay if you got tears in your eyes. Let it out. It's okay to cry out injustice on behalf of others. And it's okay to name the stuff that didn't go right so we can move into the new land without a whole lot of baggage with us. Amen? Y'all want to come? This is my season for grace. For favor, this is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Everybody all over the room. This is my seed for grace, for favor. This is my seed to reap what I have sown. This is my seed for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Everything is working together for my good. Everything is working together for my good. Everything is working. Together for my good, everything is working. Together for my good, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's working for my good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's working for my good. Yes, it's good. It's good. So good. No matter what it is, it's 
tell y'all something because I'm not moving off my ground so one of the reasons the way I'm going to sow some tears this week right I got my own set but on behalf of the community so I'm old school so all I know to do in seasons of struggle is to seek the face of God so Whoever can, I'm calling a fast to take us over. Whoever can, this is no pr- this is an invitation to join me. Because um, Lent is a time of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. But it's also a time of mourning. It's, it's, it's what it is, right? You put ashes on your face, remember? Ash Wednesday. And so, and so I'm trying to hold my ground. And not let the enemy push us back. Because, you know, it's not. So I just said, Lord, I don't know how to hold my ground except search your scriptures, right? So he said, yeah, you do. You got to go old school sometimes. And I said, well, what is old school? I'm trying to listen. Which old school are we talking about? He said, oh, you just need to fast. Fast this one through. Oh, okay. So starting tomorrow, I'm fasting. Who else will? I'm fasting from 6 to 6. 6 to 6. We're going to get up in the morning. We ain't going to eat nothing. We're going to get on the prayer line at 7. And then we're going to fast all day. Then we're going to get on the prayer line at 7 o'clock. And we're going to be done. And we're going to do it again. Until the Lord says something different. Amen. Let me have that tissue right there, sir. Because um, um, I'm ready for breakthrough. We done got too close to start thinking it ain't going to happen now. We done got too close. So, so I need whoever will can join me at least like the Bible, like Jesus, at least three days. Can y'all do that for at least three days? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, can you just do three days? I mean, that's like straight Bible, right? Right? That we just going to turn our plates down. It's like, okay, God, you leaning. I need you to move. I, I sense you leaving. God, I, I see you working. I see, God, you pushing back. Y'all, we at the table. Y'all hear me? We at the table of intercession. We at the table. We are ready to complete the deal. We are ready to sign the paper. We need God to move out these last little obstacles. Amen. And they're the little nitpicky type of things. Amen. And so they're coming back to me saying no to this, no to that. I said, no, no. I'm not saying nothing else. Listen. I'm standing right here. Believe in God. I'm going to walk up and down this street. Believe in God. That's what I'm doing. I don't know what else to do now. Are y'all with me? So can I just invite you all? That's what the Lord says. So that's what, that's what I'm supposed to tell y'all. I'm not supposed to fast by myself. I got my fasting partners in line. But the Lord said, tell the people. So that's what he said. We're we, we going to fast starting tomorrow. That's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fast it all the way over. Yes, I'm listening. I got it. I got it. I, I agree. I got it. I got it. So, um, I don't want nobody to feel uncomfortable, but I'm gonna tell y'all right now, we got to push it on over. I'm willing to lead the charge. That's what Esther said. She, she said, hold up people to fast with you. That's what he said, right? That's what Esther said. Y'all know the Bible? It said three, he said, tell the people. Say, we're going to fast for three days. And then I'm going to the king. I'm going to go. But I need to know before I walk in there that y'all fasted with me for three days. And the Lord is able to do it. So when I walk in there on behalf of the Emmaus community, I'm not walking in my own strength. 
I'm not walking in my own power. But I got the prayers of the righteous who said we're standing with you in the spirit. So that God would turn it around and work a miracle on our behalf. And the scripture says that when she went in, she had the king's attention. And when he said what? What do you want? That's what the Bible says. When she got the king's attention, he said, what, what do you want? Up, what the Bible said, up to half the kingdom. I don't need half the kingdom. I just need a building to do the work of the Lord. I, I just need some classrooms. I need some space. I need a fellowship hall. I need, God, this, this, this is what I need. And the other prayer concerns for healing and deliverance, God, that, that's what we need. And so for three days, I need you to go in as hard as you can and as seriously as you can. And you'll get a communication from me on what I need you to say and declare and speak. And so listen for a robocall in my own voice so you'll know this is how we're praying. Are you all with me? And if you're with me, let me know and say amen so I know who's with me. Three days, three days, three days. And then I'm going in. I'm going to the table with all we got. And so they can ask me what you want. And I can tell them. It's all up to God. But I'm going to tell them just what we want. At the number that we want. And no more. Come on, Elder Ben. Thank you all. Let's see communion. Come on, Elder Ben. We prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. This is my season for grace. I agree. For favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season. We've been sowing for 13 years. For grace. For favor. This is my season. To reap what I have sown. Think it's working. I'm trying to move past this. And I don't want y'all to misinterpret. Because my resolve is not moved. It's just been a week. In a week. Fighting. And I'm happy to serve. In your direction. But I'm calling God accountable for the seeds that I'm sowing. In your direction. Because I've sown some seeds. He's leaning. And I want to see some harvest in your direction. He's leaning in your direction. Oh, he's leaning. Thank you, Linda. In your direction. He's leaning. In your direction, this, this is, is my season, season for grace, for favor. Yeah, God. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Everything is working together for my good. Everything is working together for my good. Everything is working. Together for my good. 
is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap everything that I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. So, Lord God, we thank you. We stand in unity, Lord God, believing and trusting that this is our season, that you're leaning in our direction, Lord God. We are fasting and praying and believing, Lord God, that you're going to take us into our next, Lord God. We believe, Lord God, like, the, like those in the furnace and those in the lion's den, Lord God. We know you're able, Lord God. We know you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above, Lord God. And so even right now, we're just calling attention to the seeds that we planted in the ground, oh God, for the time and the testimony and the money, Lord God. We pray, God, that you would change the season, change the circumstance, oh God, change the situation, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You said some kind only get off of you out of fasting and praying, Lord God. So we enter into this moment of consecration, believing, Lord God, that you would rise up on our behalf as a community of faith, Lord God. And so we are your servants, Lord God, and we are listening. Show yourself strong, oh God. Cause us to know that you are not a liar. You're not the father of lies, but you speak the truth over our lives. And we hold you at your word, oh God, that we are not going to be weary in doing what is right, what is good. We shall not faint, but we expect, oh God, we pray, God, that you would give us the harvest. You know the deepest prayers of our hearts, oh God, individually and corporately. And we lay them all before you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Amen. I receive that in Jesus' name. We're going to ask you to return to your seats. Thank you. And we're going to do an expedited um, version of communion while the Spirit's in the room. I praise God for all the leaders, the leaders that are coming up, the intercessors, the elder, everyone. I think we're just going to start here, Elder Man, with this part. Is it on yours? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. And so as we gather to celebrate this the Lord's Supper, we just recommit ourselves to our mission to our core passions of the Emmaus community. We could recommit ourselves to integrity, relationships, growth, grace, simplicity, collaboration, creativity, and fun. May this bread and drink become for us in this moment, your life-giving body and blood. And may we who share this meal be joined with you and with one another as one body united in resurrection life and sharing with all creation in our eternal salvation. Amen. Hear these words of the Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by the Apostle Paul. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup also after the supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Family and friends, we will observe Holy Communion by way of intention, which means we invite you to come forward, take a piece of bread, and dip it lightly in the grape juice or the wine. I will have the grape juice, and Elder Ben will have the wine. On my right and in my left, there will be intercessors who will be glad to pray for those who need prayer, to anoint children who need anointing, and just to hear a whisper of prayer for anyone who needs one. As you come forward, as is our custom, we remind you to please say your name, even if you think we know it. It just reminds us we want to know everybody, name by name and face by face. You are now in the hands of the hospitality serving team and the communion guild and the table of elders. Amen.
God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And I rejoice today. I shall recover it all. And I rejoice today. I shall recover it all.
us pray. Your death, O oh Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection we confess. Your final coming we await. Glory be to you, O oh Christ. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home to this table. Dying and living, we declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share in this Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others, and we whom the Spirit lights will be a light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, that we all who have come to your table shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you to please stand and take a neighbor by the hand as we prepare our hearts and minds for our benediction. We do remind you that we will be here Thursday night for exploration, daytime and evening time. And I praise God in advance for all who would join us on this fast as we prepare our hearts to literally go to the table. Amen. So we will start tomorrow morning and I will send you a text or a call if you're on the call line on further direction. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our benediction, you shine brightly in your homes, your places of work, and even when you don't think anyone is looking, even when you don't think you are worthy, you are taking the next step into a great journey to go with you. Move onward and upward. Christ living in you is the hope of the world. There's no other plan. So go out and be who God is calling you to be. You are more ready than you realize. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. I was going to try.